Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Centre for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness was presented with a copy of a book authored by Deir Asat as a tribute to Bahrain's successful progress and achievements under the support of His Royal Highness. His Royal Highness noted that recording development progress helps ensure Bahrain remains on track towards achieving its goals. For his part, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah expressed his appreciation for the support extended by His Royal Highness to Deir Asat's initiatives. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, was also in attendance. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, an implementation of the directors of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Honorary President of Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, a brief, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the races of His Majesty the King's Endurance Cup continue, organised by brief at Bahrain International Endurance Village. The 100km international race for the public and the 80km qualifying race were held at the village in the presence of the Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Environment and Deputy President of the Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up Committee at the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa and the President of Brief, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that His Majesty the King's Endurance Cup Championship is a highlight of Bahraini endurance races as it carries the name of His Majesty the King. He stated that holding a series of various races aims to attract a large number of riders and stables to provide a suitable atmosphere for them and assert the pioneership of Bahraini endurance. The 100km race witnessed the participation of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the son of His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid, and His Highness finished the race successfully.
The Southern Governor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, launched a book entitled Rifa is a Source of Pride in the Past and the Present. The book was launched in a virtual event as part of the Southern Governor's efforts to document the history of its areas. His Highness made a speech in which he said the Governorate has become a model to be emulated in all fields thanks to its cultural heritage and its contributions to the Kingdom in light of the directs of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to carry on with the process of comprehensive development. His Highness added that the Governorate is keen on executing the directives of the Minister of Interior by engaging with the people of the Governorate and safeguarding the social achievements. A three-dimensional film was then presented based on the innovation of His Highness and the Governorate staff. For their part, the attendees expressed thanks and appreciation for His Highness's efforts to engage with the community. A virtual joint intergovernmental parliamentary meeting was held, chaired by the Representatives Council Speaker, Fazia Zanal, with the participation of the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, and in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, and a number of officials, to brief the Legislative Authority on the results of the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs to Brussels. As the meeting started, the Representative Council Speaker affirmed that the meeting comes in the context of effective and continuous cooperation between the Executive and the Legislative Authority in implementation of the Directors of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. For his part, the Shura Council Chairman stressed that Bahrain, under the leadership and Directors of His Majesty the King, has established a firm approach to respecting human rights within the democratic human rights and development process by including government strategies and programmes that incorporate human rights principles and values. As for the Foreign Affairs Minister, he briefed the Parliament on his visit to Brussels, in which he met with a number of senior officials in the European Union and the European Parliament, discuss ways to promote cooperation and inform them of the political trends and positions of the Kingdom towards various political and security issues and challenges in the region. At the end of the meeting, the Foreign Minister answered questions raised by members of the Parliament. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, underscored the leading steps taken by the Kingdom to face the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic at the national level, including financial and economic stimulus package launched by the government upon the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, with the aim to maintain the health and safety of the Kingdom's citizens and residents. He stated that these steps are in line with the government's efforts to achieve the goals of sustainable development. He recalled the statement issued by the International Monetary Fund, which praised the steps adopted by the Kingdom to limit the repercussions of the virus. He added that the Kingdom relies on the private sector as the main engine for development, which necessitated the launch of the 4.5 billion Bahraini dinar stimulus package to support the national economic sectors by increasing liquidity. The Minister noted the importance of cooperation and coordination in achieving prosperity. The Minister of Labour and Social Development and President of the National Commission for Childhood, Jamil Humedan, has lauded the ratification and issuance of the Corrective Justice Law for Children and the protection from ill treatment by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa after being endorsed by the Shura and Representatives Councils. Humidan stated that the law reflects His Majesty the King's keenness to improve the conditions of the children at the legal, social, educational and cultural levels, noting that Law 4 of 2021 guarantees restorative justice, care and protection from ill treatment for children. It aims to give top priority to the children's interest at all rulings, decisions and procedures related to them, regardless of the authority that issues or executes them. Humidan asserted that the new law strengthens the Kingdom's regional and international status in the field of human rights protection, as it reflects its keenness to activate the provisions of the child-related international agreements and treaties it has ratified, adding that the new national legislation will ensure children's interests and right to live in peace. He also stressed that the new law will play a vital role in the work of the public and private institutions. Bahrain is considered a leader in legalising child rights through the issuance of many decree laws in this regard. 
It has also been un keen on ratifying international treaties aimed at preserving and protecting the rights of children. And to speak more about the ratification and issuance of the corrective justice law for children and the protection by His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa al-Khalifa from ill-treatment, we are now joined on the phone by Shura Council member Dr Fatima al kuhiji Hello Dr Fatima. Hello, hi. Tell us more about the law and how it can contribute to protecting children and what are the new measures? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be with you in this programme. Uh, actually, I feel that the, this law stems uh, from legislative philosophy that Bahrain adapts. We have always been actually pioneers in issuing laws that protect children's rights. And we are keen to update Bahrain's legislative system to be consistent with the international conventions and treaties related to children. Therefore, the law of corrective justice for children and their protection from ill treatment has been issued. Uh, as uh, you see, that the third chapter of law, which is named Children's Protection from Ill Treatment, stipulates the establishment of child protection centers, and this is a really important center. Uh, this center will be formed by the Ministry of Social Development, and the center is run by the board that consists of members who have certain related specialization. Also, this law will also assign the bodies to which reports and complaints can be submitted in case of exposing children to ill treatment or in cases of physical sexual abuse to take the necessary measures to protect the children and punish the abusers, I feel. Is this okay for the, this question? Thank you so much, Dr. Fatima, for being with us. The Financial and Economic Affairs Committee at the Council of Representatives held a meeting to discuss the latest updates on the 2021 to 2022 financial years as per Decree 70 of 2020. The meeting discussed the suggested articles which are to be reviewed alongside the relevant parties in the government. It affirmed the importance of committing to the expenditure calling adjusting the project's budget to 53 million dinars. The budget was also adjusted to reflect oil prices at $50 per barrel. The social security sector, government revenue and municipality and infrastructure budgets were among the topics that were also discussed. The committee affirmed support for citizens through water and electricity subsidies, along with support for the fields of housing, health and youth and sports. The third edition of the Caleb Ben Hamid Competition for Innovation in Artificial Intelligence to be organised by the Bahrain Polytechnic in cooperation with the media office of His Highness Sheikh Khalid Ben Hamid Al Khalifa is set to be held digitally. The Hackfest competition tests the team's ability to create innovative projects that use one or more Microsoft Azure features for artificial intelligence. To speak more about this, we are joined by Head of ICT School at Bahrain Polytechnic, Dr. Christos Gasolis. Hello, Dr. Christos. Tell Hello, good evening. And good thank evening. Thank you for hosting me tonight. Tell us about the Caleb and Hammock competition for innovation in artificial intelligence and how ICT can further contribute to supporting innovation and creativity among youth. Thank you so much. First, allow me to say that we are delighted to have been hosting this competition under the of His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the third vice president of the Supreme Council for Youth Sports and chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee. Uh, this year, the competition is on the third edition. It is held digitally due to the pandemic, and as you mentioned, it is organized by Bahrain Polytechnic, as well as Al Moyer Computers, Microsoft, and the Information and E Government Authority. The AI Hackfest, as we call it, it has the aim to test participants' abilities in making innovative projects using cloud technologies by Microsoft, and more particularly the AI technologies. 
Now, what happens in this competition is that the participants work in teams of two to four members. They are given around five weeks to work on a project idea. Project can be anything really that utilizes artificial intelligence tools such as computer vision, voice recognition, chatbots, and they can be deployed either on a website, a mobile app, a wearable device, or really anything that can store uh, an intelligent type of software. Um, in addition, we have been offering webinar workshops for the participants during those weeks. At the end, they will be judged by an evaluation panel, and winners will be announced at an awards ceremony. Um, it's worth saying also that we have seen some fantastic projects in the past editions that relate very closely to some of today's global challenges. We have seen smart financial wallets, configured wearable devices that allow people with kinetic difficulties to operate home appliances. We've seen sign language translators and smart greenhouses, among others. Now, coming to how it can contribute to support innovation and creativity among youth, well, artificial intelligence, it is really an emerging technology, and we have new tools continuously arise. And this provides the perfect environment to foster innovation and practice creativity because our artificial intelligence finds application in almost everything. The new tools provided by Microsoft and other similar providers offer a level of abstraction that doesn't require detailed knowledge of mathematics and programming, allowing developers to focus more on ideas and uh, experimentation, making this like a, an ideal setup for young students. And while there are many experienced developers utilizing AI, the youth hold them advantage in the fact that due to them being mostly users of technology and not developers, they tend to think out of the box and they can identify real problems and offer novel solutions for them. Thank you, Dr. Christos, for being with us. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 held a meeting to review the latest COVID-19 developments, including the latest increase in active cases and efforts to mitigate the spread of the virus. These restrictions exclude schools and institutions catering for individuals with special needs, for medical students, as well as teachers, principals and all other educational administrative staff. The task force noted that relevant decision on sector activities will be reviewed periodically according to the latest COVID-19 developments and statistics in order to ensure the health and safety of all. The task force noted that a strong and unified commitment to precautionary measures will keep the community safe and reduce the spread of COVID-19. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 4,590 had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 257,580. 
The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 7,631 with 604 recoveries, 696 registered new cases and three deaths. 259 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 418 are contacts of active cases and 19 are travel related. The deceased were 75, 77 and 49 year old citizens. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.